Now, I will present an important determinant for valuing people, the dualism which is the hallmark of human existence. There is no, there will be no, and will never be possible to create a human precedently evaluation system. Just like each drop of water has the same potential for us, and while most of them are common and insignificant, up to the end we can never predict which one will save us. In the previous movie, I mentioned the generation of superheroes. Let's start from this point. For millennials, superheroes were the strong determinant of moral systems. Someone objectively good, also altruistic, capable of fighting the devil of the word or preventing global disasters. Such an exemplary figure has been in every generation and culture. However, the detailed features changed in the cultural context, so we had people. Greatly connected with nature, super good, bright scientists, top altruists and remarkable martyrs, and for millennials, the superheroes. Society instinctively recognized the need to develop such traits in a population and putting them as a model to follow. We've had many such examples in history. Dalai Lama, the foremost spiritual leader. Abraham, created the idea of a national bond. Jesus, showed that each of us is God, a part of great force of the universe. Prophet Muhammad, created the most vibrant religion in the world. Plato, founder of Western political philosophy. Confucius, the first philosopher remarked that humans are righteous and don't need religion. Nicholas Copernicus, showed that we are only a small part of the great cosmos. Catherine Johnson, flawlessly calculated rocket trajectories for the first space missions. Einstein, mathematically formulated the direct relationship between the real and the virtual world. Lincoln, fought for the unity of the world despite ideological divisions and ethnicity. Shakespeare, showed the beauty of literature. Presley, created modern music. Ford, founder of the modern economy. Although none of them changed the earth itself, their achievements influenced millions. Each of them brought something extraordinary. Most of the people who are so important to the world started their careers from an extremely vile situation. Einstein lived in a country whose leaders made their primary goal to terminate him and his relatives. Abraham was a refugee living in a tent wandering in the desert. Copernicus published a work for which the death penalty was imposed in his days. Jesus comes from the poorest tribe, the poorest home, and in fact he did not even have a house. Similarly, great President Lincoln, was born in a shed and raised in poverty. At the opposite end, we have physicist the French Duke de Broglie from a wealthy family honored for many generations. Louis de Broglie, called a prince because of his noble origin, proved that our world is merely a visible expression of a virtual reality and his work became the foundation of Schrödinger's great quantum theory. The careful study of the biographies of significant people revealed that they come from any and all possible backgrounds. Thus, this is the most important summary for the evolutionary ethics, no one, neither a single person, neither an institution, neither the nation, can predict our fate, our destiny. Each person is unique, and potentially great. There is no, and there will never be, a way to predict the fate in advance. If we understand this basic limitation, we will be able to draw some simple, yet permanent conclusions about the universal moral principles, such as the grandeur and dignity of every human being. I will develop this topic further in the next episode.